So today we're going to talk about insulin resistance. <laughs> this is Sarah Bouchard. She's a communications major, so she really has no idea what we're talking about today. No. But, okay, so first off, we're going to start with glucose homeostasis. So this is um, formerly known as, like, negative feedback loop. Um, and this is what you want your body to be in um, because you have both your loops are the same, and I'll discuss why they work the same. So insulin and glucagon help with regulation of your blood sugar. Um, and so insulin is when you're in the fed state, so when you're eating, and then glucagon is when you're in the fasted state. Um, and yeah, so we'll get to that. So first off, we'll start. So let's say you have stimulus number one here. <laughs> so, so this is like when like you're eating, so like when you're eating like carbohydrates or something like that. Um, so this then goes into your body, and this will send a signal up to your hypothalamus, which then sends a signal down to your pancreas, which then will go and it will release insulin into, actually, sorry, hold on, it will not release it yet. It will send a signal to the insulin receptors, receptors, which then will release insulin into the bloodstream, insulin release, which will then increase, or yeah, increase your blood glucose levels, so increase blood sugar, which then brings it to homeostasis, and this is where you want your body to be. So then, so that's insulin. Does that really make sense mm -hmm. with like fed state and everything? Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna move into the fasted state. So again, you have another stimulus. So this is when you are in the fasted state and you haven't eaten for like four to six hours. So that'll be like stimulus number two. <laughs> so then again, so it'll go to the hypothalamus which then sends a signal to the pancreas because insulin and glucagon are stored in the pancreas. So this will go down to the pancreas again, which then will send a signal to your glucagon receptors, glucagon receptors, which then releases glucagon into the bloodstream, glucagon release, which then this raises your blood sugar levels to balance out insulin and then so this will like raise, yes, raise blood sugar, which then goes back to homeostasis, and then this will go back to when you start eating again, go back into this, and then come back down to glucagon. Got it. That makes sense? Yep. Okay, cool. So now we'll move over to insulin resistance. So insulin, like we kind of talked about over here, um, it's a regulation of glucose in the bloodstream, um, but like, let's say like you keep eating a lot, or this is often... Um, what type 2 diabetes is um, because you have an excess amount of insulin in your body. So when insulin resistance happens, glucose cannot be um, entered into your cells um, and then you have a buildup of this in your bloodstream. So it's kind of the same, but I'll explain. So you see here, insulin is a lot bigger because you have a buildup in the bloodstream and then glucagon is really small. Mm -hmm. So again, so stimulus number one, so again, kind of like when you're eating or whatever, um, this then goes up to the hypothalamus again. So hypothalamus into the pancreas, sends a signal over there to the, so then from the pancreas goes to the insulin receptors, receptors, which then releases insulin. So insulin release. But like we talked about over here, um, insulin, increases your blood stream or in wow increases your blood glucose levels so it'll do that so increase blood glucose levels will just do that but unfortunately with glucagon there's not enough of it to start this process and bring it back to homeostasis unfortunately then homeostasis oh my god I can't read homeostasis is like a no-go because you can't bring it back down to homeostasis. So then you just stay up here and you start the whole cycle over again. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, 